Welcome to the Milestones Podcast, where we engage, inform, and encourage parents in strategic moments in their family's lives. Whether your family is close to the Lord or far away, this conversation is for you. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to uh, our Milestones Podcast. This is The Drive. This is where we just feed you information and uh, maybe you uh, take topics that you guys have asked or uh, wanted us to just talk about with our team. Uh, today is just me and Isaiah. It's just a couple dudes in here. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about guy drama. And so Isaiah's uh, always got drama in his life. And so uh, tell us, Isaiah, about it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't have any drama in my life. <laughs> uh, so I don't um, – this is going to be way more short than the girl drama one um, just because I feel like it's just to the point. And I just feel like with guy drama, there's consequences to every decision that you have. And let's just start with the people that you surround yourself with. And if you are a young man and you surround yourself with garbage, you surround yourself with people that always just want to talk. I mean, you can get so much more done talking to someone to their face than talking about them. And I just feel like that is the one thing that young men quit doing. They just start talking online or they start talking through their phones or they, I mean, you can get so much more accomplished just going to someone and handling the situation. And if we don't teach that within our young men, we're going to lose this, um, uh, this gift that the Lord has given men to be able to talk and handle situation. I mean, it's just, I, I, I don't, we lose this, this nature that God has put within us. If we're just going to talk around people and not to them and I feel like guy drama, I don't like it. I'm not around it. If I ever hear a girl talking about drama, I just like, I just quit listening and I just get out of the room or I walk away. I just want nothing to do with it. If I hear a guy talking about drama, I immediately tell them to stop, get over it, and quit whining. Like I, I cannot stand guy drama. And it usually just starts with the consequence for the decision you made about what you want to do, who you're going to hang out with why you wanted to go there. Like you made that decision long before you got to that point. I'm getting fired up, but I mean, this room is about 60 degrees in this room. It's freezing in here and I'm already starting to sweat. I'm getting so mad about it. Uh, Isaiah, uh, do you want to stop me and pour out anything? Keep keep going. I'm, <laughs> I'm loving it. I, I just, I, I do under, I, I just don't. Um, I know that if, if you have a, a young man mm -hmm. and he's, 17 and you just see him around drama uh, and, and he's someone who he he loves the lord he he tries to walk in the in the name of the lord he 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 it, not saying he's perfect but he he strives to do those things nothing nothing will make that christian walk stumble like compromise mm -hmm. and i just feel like when you begin to compromise is when the drama just starts filing in compromising on who you're dating, compromising on who you hang out with, what you're doing. like, And when compromise steps in, nothing ruins that Christian walk like that. And if you just, if a, if a, a, a teenager comes in and says, hey, uh, you know, Caleb, I, I want to talk to you about this. And they just start talking about things that really are just drama. It always just goes back to a moment where they just compromise something in their life. And that, that ruins your Christian walk. Mm -hmm. Um, you, you don't have, um, you, you get to those decisions and you make those decisions mainly because you, you just weren't wise to begin with. And it's, it's things that you, it's not that it was sin when you first started the drama. It wasn't sin. It just wasn't wise based off of who you are, based off of what you like, based off of, 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 of what God's called you to be, what you, what you used to be, what you want to be. Like, it's just not wise, the direction you handled. It wasn't that it was sin. It wasn't wise. And that will lead to drama. And so let's just get to the point of where were you not wise in your life? And are you enjoying that? Are you, is it, is it, that's what's causing the drama? Um, where do you start I think you start with where did you begin to make unwise decisions in your life? And I guarantee you that will be the drama. Yeah. No, I, I agree. Um, and I just, I also think it goes into who you, the mentors you have in your life as well. 
with decisions and I think today people think, oh, it's it's a huge decision. This is a huge deal. This is what's going to define my life. But I'm the opposite. I'm, I look into all the little details, the little decisions, the little um, factors of everything because in things like that, like those small decisions, it makes up a huge impact on your life. And whether something wrong go or you do something or you fall away from maybe your walk with Christ in the future, you may, people may look back and say, what was the one decision that happened? But it's like, it wasn't one decision. It was probably a series of small decisions that you just continued to go through and didn't want to change and didn't want to nip in the butt when it first started. Yeah, yeah. And I think you have a, a group of people, and if that if you have six people um, – that are your friends, and five of them continually to spark drama, pour on drama in your life, what do you think is going to happen? It's like uh, Proverbs when he says, I, I, I'm, uh, uh, he says I, I'm, I'm standing at the top, and I look down from the lattice, and I see a young man at the corner of the street, and I see him, and it's because he's young, and he does not know. I see him like an ox being led to the slaughter, and sometimes as a parent, you look at someone, or maybe just as a student pastor, I'll look at a kid and I just see him. And I'm like, it's just because you're young and, you, and you're you're not wise right now, but I can see the direction you're going. That group that you're around, you have got to leave them. You cannot you cannot stay around. They're just going to feed you garbage. They're just going to. You mean they 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 might be great guys to hang out with. They might be good people. They might give you the shirt off their back. They might be able to help you out, but they're not godly people. There's a difference between having good friends and godly friends. And if you constantly are just around people that are just good friends, you're going to be around drama in your life. Mm-hmm. That's just not going to, it's not going to stop. Um, which, you know, I, I don't, Isaiah, I mean, we could keep talking about this more. I just feel like you're either going to get the point or you're not. Oh uh, yeah. No, I agree with that as well. Um, it, it may be your parents, are on your back about it the whole time and you kind of tune it out at some point, but whether it be that or there needs to be someone in your life that you can listen to and they need to tell you that and you need to be able to listen to them and that kid needs to be able to listen to them and being like, hey, I know my parents probably said the same thing, but what you're saying, those people are not great people and they're going to somehow lead to me ruining my own walk with Christ or my own walk in life. And you have to acknowledge that at some point in your life or what they don't want to happen will happen. And that is you experience it for yourself. And sometimes in that case, it may be too late, but in other times it, it could be a perfect timing for you to realize it. Yeah. And yeah, I think it'll fall back to what, what it is that's driving you. And what it is that's driving you and what it is that's guiding you should be the same thing. Mm-hmm. It can't be two different things. Like, you can't have the the love of God driving you and all of a sudden what's guiding you is whatever your girlfriend's saying. Yeah. Like, you can't, that can't happen. Like, the things that drive you and the things that are your guardrails sh- should be the same. You know, like, let the love of God, let, let that drive you and let His call in your life, let that be what is your guardrail, you know? And so... If, if it's different things than what the Lord has given you, like I'm, you're going to be all over the map and you're going to be in a, a, an emotional roller coaster over and over again. Like that guardrail has got to be something that the Lord has called you and, you know, created you to be. I mean, he's called you to be above reproach, uh, you know, and if you have those guardrails, you can let the love of God push you and in, in any friend group, in any situation, in any sport, in any, you know, work that you end up doing, I just... If those two things, if what guides you and what guards you, if they, if those things are different in your life, I would say you're going to constantly be in drama. And so anyway, uh, we're going to move on probably to another topic, but uh, that has been it for God drama. And I uh, hope that's not part of your day today. So uh, we'll talk to you later. <laughs>